Hello and welcome back to the studio. I am so excited to be painting with you today. The snow is melting here and the sun is out and it is a perfect time to paint some spring birds. This is a fun one that I've been practicing with. I apologize for my nails. Um, this is why I don't often do them. But this bird, it only uses one color of paint and it's fun. It's um, quite simple, a lot of simple shapes and elements, but it looks very elegant, very folk arty, Scandinavian. So it's a really fun one to add to your you know, spring greeting cards or decorations, however you decide to use it. I am going to start with a five by seven paper. Um, you can use a square. My brushes are absolutely annihilated. My kids have been using them, so I do apologize. You'll notice it's not quite the same amount of precision as, you know, maybe you, I would want normally. Um, but it's what I have. It's what I'm going to run with. Okay, I have my indigo blue paint. As you know, I love my indigo. And I'll just start by getting it wet. With the brush activating the color a bit and we can go ahead and just start drawing the outline of the bird with the paint itself we're going to do an egg shaped shape um, let's see like so just like a chicken egg at an angle. If it's, you know, it's if you prefer to draw with a pencil first, you can go right ahead. The nice thing about this particular image that we are going to be working on is that the outline, it can all be visible. It doesn't need to be, you know, if you need to go over the line a couple times to make the right shape, like it's not going to ruin your the final effect. So we have our egg shape, then we're going to add in the head just a sort of half circle here at the top. We will, for the wing, I'm going to divide this into another half circle, just sort of a curve. It's not a half circle, it's a curve. And this will be divided by a straight line. And then we'll do the tail, which is, you know, down at the narrow end, one line out, another line out, and then a line across. And the last bit is the beak. So let's do a little triangle there. All right, and there we have the outline of our bird. Next, what we need to do is I'm actually gonna take a little bit of water and just brush it over the belly of the bird. Not too much, just enough so that when I add the paint, I can it can come on as a very light wash. So we'll use the same color and in more concentrated form to make the designs on the belly. It's important to keep this particular wash very, very light. Um, if you can, you know, as the water seeps into the paper, you can sort of rub your brush up against that original line and blend it in a bit. It'll lift the paint just enough to smooth it out. make it not quite as noticeable. And we'll do the same for this half of the wing. And again, if you can lift some of that paint, add some water, run your brush alongside it.
There we go. All right, now I'm just adding a little bit to the chin, a little bit of shade, shadowing. Um, and then I'm gonna run the paint just so it's a smoother line. So it just looks like it fits a little better. Run straight down into the curve. Here we go. And we'll do the same with the top of the bird's head. See how right now it's sort of like a heart bump? What I wanna do is make a straight line that connects it. And I'll get a little bit more concentrated paint to run there. And it's okay if it bleeds a little bit. It's not quite dry for it to stay in the lines very well. And then I'm gonna curve it down a little bit so I have a little bit of a cuter, more acute curve for the head. And then get a little bit more of that concentrated paint and darken that line a little bit. There we go. And for the beak, I'd like it to be darker. And then we'll add the eye here. It's a little circle. And I'm doing tiny little dots just to add a little bit of texture and visual interest to this part of the bird. Okay. And next, we'll work on this part of the wing. I'm going through the white areas now to give the others, this part a chance to dry so we can start adding in our details. Um, but for the wing, it's up to you. I've got some maybe thicker spots. Here. And then I can add some thin lines. Like so. All right, and then we'll do the tail. I'm just gonna run parallel lines. There's no specific number. Um, do whatever feels, feels right, whatever your brush is capable of. And then I'm gonna darken up this top one a little bit. Rinse off my brush and do just a very light wash on the other side. And then get some more of that paint. And I'm doing sort of a, sh I'm gonna do a chevron-ish thing. So let's see, this should all be shaded in. We're gonna do up, down, up. So pick a line. My first one nearest the dark side is going to just be very thin upward strokes. The next the middle one for me is going to be downward strokes that meet the other ones in a little V. It feels challenging to do this. I'm not sure if it's just because it's so small or what. And then the final one will be down again. Again, meeting though at the line. There we go. So, so that's the texture of the tail. Look it up so you can see it. And then let's see, we can test how, how dry this is. I like a little outline on the wing. Oops, a little more water in my paint. All right, 
four. Let's see. I in a little curve. Drop in some paint. I see it's still wet here, so I'm going to take advantage of that and do a little bit of shading. Just for a little more contrast. And then on the belly, basically it's just a group of swirls, leaves, circles, and flowers. <laughs> so let's start here, just below that peak. We'll do like an S with a curl at the end. Do a little curl on this part. Do a little push here. Spiral there. Spiral here. Like an S. A little curl, curl. Um, basically what I'm trying to do here is just keep them evenly spaced. And then I'll start adding in little leaves, alternating. Here and there. When I have a few leaves, I'll find the smaller area, then put circles in there. You can fill in the circles or leave them open. I think my first one I did them open. Um, the first time I did this bird, my brush was not ruined, so I had a lot more control <laughs> over what was going on. Okay, and then in these bigger spaces, what I'm going to do is do little four petal flowers. So one, two, three, four, and a dot in the middle. One, two, three, four, and a dot in the middle. That's sort of faded there. Can do one right here. All right, and then I'll just fill in some empty spaces with curls. The more detail you can add, the more elegant. Um, the overall effect will be. Okay. So, similar enough, it's a little more narrow than the first one. The first one was quite cute. second one was quite fat. Um, but, you know, I think you could leave it like this if you're making it into a pattern of some sort. Uh, you can add little feet. Just three little swipes for feet. And then one thing that I did on this one, which I thought turned out well, um, was just adding a little bit of a flourish, a sort of a branch. So let's add a little bit, get our same color of paint, and then just do a broad swipe downwards like that. A little bit up here. And then we're going to take the same spirally element and run it along, make it more of a cohesive picture. So throw your spirals in. You know, maybe this is a vine. You can add your same leaves. Keep them very similar if you can to what's going on on the bird's belly. However you've decided to draw those. And then you can add some dots if you'd like. And if this is dry, I think mine's still too wet, but you could have, you know, some of the vines drape over it. Those little flowers. Um, but there you go. It's a very, again, just, just a cute little 
um, painting. You can do it in different colors. The nice thing about it is the simplicity. Like it looks so good when it's done. Um, but as you can tell, like it's a single brush. I am using a annihilated size six <laughs> round. Um, you could use a smaller brush certainly for a little bit more control over the detail, but one color and look at how fun that turns out. So I hope you enjoyed this painting and I cannot wait to see you next time.